Hey, MVPs, Rico knows here. Shout out to YouTube, TikTok, uh, Patreon, Twitter, wherever you're watching this video from. I appreciate you guys. If you don't know, I pick fights, right? So I'm Rico Knows. We've been picking fights all year. I want to go over some of the results before we talk about UFC 305. But if you look at last week's results, we knock it out the park. I know you see some red in there. Don't stress it. That's not real. One of the reds is all correct winners, meaning I didn't get the card 100% right. That's a red, okay? Saying the four prelim winners, we lost the spread or a lean there. Not a big deal. When you see the white text, that means we hit all five locks. By the way, that was the second week in a row we've hit all five locks. Okay, the fact that we hit every parlay was important. That was two weeks ago. Last week, it didn't quite work out that way, but we still hit the top two parlays. And if we ever hit the top two parlays, that means MVPs are winning money. We're winning a ton of money. Our locks are sitting pretty, okay, at 82.75. It's actually higher. Uh, I'll click on it now. 83 and 48. 83%, 83 and a half percent on locks. So if I tell you it's a lock, we're probably right. Okay, that being said, I always give away the first pick of the night for free. And then we get into the rest of the picks. If you want to become an MVP and see all the other breakdowns, you know what to do. Get to Patreon or YouTube, become a member. Shout out to the MVP. So let's talk about the matchup to start the early prelim. It's a UFC debut for a guy named Stewie. Shout out to Stewie. Stewie Nickel, 8 0. These are 125 pounders, and he's fighting T Rex. T Rex has Seuss Aguilar. We've seen him before, we got him wrong. It was a lean the last time I saw him. I told you he would lose his fight. He didn't lose. He won by split decision. I think we got robbed. But little Aguilar here is 5'4", 126, and he's got the reach of a 5'2", teenage girl. Like, he does not have – he's already the size of a middle schooler. He's got the smallest arms in the world, and he's just not about that life. Okay? Yes, he seems, he seems to win fights. If you look at one of his losses, it's to Tatsua Tiara, a great fighter. There's no shame in that loss. Beat the hell out of Shannon Ross in like 17 seconds, and everybody talks about that knockout. But what do we know? That's the only knockout in his life. It's just a lucky strike. That is not who he is. We saw that against Mandanka. We've seen that in all his other fights. This man has one win by TKO. Oh, by the way, he appears to be a liability. When it comes to grappling, you see it there. He's been submitted twice in his life, once to by Tiara and then once by Gabriel Valdez, a rear naked choke. Yes, he's gotten some wins by guillotine. That's, that's news to me. The smallest arms in the world, and he just catches people with them. I don't know. That's wild. You wouldn't catch me with no 62-inch arms. I'm letting you know that right now. That being said, he's fighting Stuart Nickel, UFC debut. Don't know much about Stuart Nickel, so I go turn on the tape. Uh, what do I see in Stuart Nickel? This is a grappler. This is not a, a striker. He's not going to go out there and knock you out. Yes, he's won four fights in a row, TKOs. But they're really far into the round, and they're all kind of ground and pound TKOs. They're takedown. I'm in a dominant body position, ground and pound. Right? I like to call it club and sub. I think that all these were club and subs over here. He is a straight beast when it comes to grappling. And I think he holds the edge over grappling. So in this particular fight, though, uh, if you look at the sports book, they don't have the other bets you can put right now. They have it at a minus 235. I would say Stuart Nichols is going to finish this fight, and it's not going to go the distance. So I would say inside of the distance. I don't think this goes the distance. If you, For all you guys out there who are talking prop bets, you can do that. I'm going to tell you, take it easy. Take the money line, and we rock with it. But if you need a prop, because you need to put juice on something, that's on you. And you guys know I don't really go there. I'm going to say over here, not go the distance. And that's a prop that I believe in, and I'll put it there. It feels like a lean, not a real lock. But for me, Stuart Nickel just looks like a superior grappler. He's going to get the takedown, be in a dominant body position, win rounds, eventually TKO you because... He just has like a relentless aggression to keep pushing. He'll throw elbows. He'll throw hammer fists. He'll throw whatever he needs to throw to make the volume just add up to where the ref just has to step in and be like, enough's enough. Okay? You'll notice on this card, they have a lot of Australian, New Zealand type fighters, and they're trying to give them some shine. And if I could describe Stuart Nickel in two words, it would be, Steve Ursig. <laughs> it would be Steve Ursig, like this really humble, quiet, just killer, bro. Doesn't look like a killer, like kind of nerdy. I get it, but he's, a, but he's a beast. I like what I saw on tape. I look forward to seeing him win. Now, I, guys, I understand. Early prelim fights, sometimes they don't go our way. 
if you were here for the Dana White Contender Series and we do those fights on Tuesday nights, you know how things can go right or wrong. Um, but for me, I look at Stuart Nickel and he just looks like a good fighter. He has not fought anybody as good as Jesus Aguilar. He hasn't. But I just feel like they're setting him up to be a guy that they try to give some momentum to and the hype train. And whenever promoters do that and they don't ever get it twisted, UFC is a promotion. They are trying to pick and choose their opponents. This is a sacrificial lamb. Jesus Aguilar is a set. They, he's a very boring fighter. He puts on a boring product. They're bringing in somebody exciting who will dominate him and hopefully win the fight and gain more fandom for that region of the world, if you will. So, Shout out to Jesus Aguilar. He is a Mexican. He is tough. I believe in him. But um, give me Stuart Nickel. It's a lock. We get those right 83.5% of the time. If you want to see the breakdowns for all the other fights, become an MVP. Your friends don't know, but Rico knows. Good luck, y'all. Peace.